Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I am filming a book review if you read the title for this video and I am reviewing How to Grow Wings by Rima Onoseta. This one I got when I was at Yalk. It was like a sale thing. You bought a book and you got an art for free and I just decided to pick this up. One because the cover did draw me in and also I looked at the release date and it was released in August and I thought I wanted a new art instead of an art that had been out for a while. So this was released on the 9th of August so one week since when you're watching this, if I get this up when I am thinking I'm getting this up in my head. It is a YA contemporary and it follows two sisters, a pair of sisters, however you say it. We have the other one who is Sheta and she has always protected her sister, etc. and experiences a lot of direct abuse from their mother, both physically and verbally. And she's been striving, I guess, for, for perfection, except in other parts of her life, like at school, being ahead of class, etc, etc. Trying to make her mother proud, not really working out because her mother is abusive. Then we have the younger sister, Sam, who doesn't experience the direct abuse from the mother, but of course living in an abusive home will always affect you anyway. One, because her sister does protect her from like the really harsh realities that she just goes right in her face, but also because she's much more quiet, she doesn't take a lot of space, she does exactly what the mother wants so that she will not get the mother's anger, which I wouldn't say makes you experience less abuse, it's just that you know how to avoid the direct hit of it, but like, you know, that's another discussion for another day. Or not another day, but like, another type of discussion, because we are discussing the abuse, we're not discussing it, but we are mentioning it. You know what I mean. And what happens in the book is that they have a really rich uncle, like their father's brother, and he is like, have a really cool job. So, cool job, really high tier politician, police commissioner job. So he's very, very, very rich. I wouldn't say like that their main family is like super poor. The uncle is super rich. He has like a mansion with servants and it's a lot. It's like a huge class difference. And then the younger sister, Sam, is offered to come and live with them and like, you know, get all the resources that they have with her education, etc. But the older sister, Sheta, is left behind, obviously. What happens then? I mean, you have to read a book to find out. Obviously, this is a spoiler-free review. But it's definitely a hard-hitting book, by all means. And did I say it is set in Nigeria? I think I didn't say that in the beginning. It is set in Nigeria the whole time. Oh, not the whole time, actually. We are, at the moment, we are not actually in Nigeria. But that is kind of a spoiler to why and how. So yeah, that was, that was actually a thought in my head. Basically just about these two girls' lives and what they experienced, how they lived. Or what happens to them now. And I really, really did enjoy it. I think it was a really well-written book. You really care for different characters. You could definitely see a lot of the different things the author has put into it and just like the different dynamics, especially between her sisters, because it's so difficult for them. They can barely speak to each other. They are really bad at communicating with each other and they don't really have a good relationship. And it hurt me so much because they both clearly cared a lot for each other, but did not know how to express this. And I think the author did this very, very well. So we have the sibling relationship. And then when Sam moves to this new city, I actually wrote the name of the city down, but it's not like, the name of the city matters that much, unless maybe you're known where the city is. When she moves to this different city, that was my point, is that she meets these other people that also live in their house, like your cousin and the friend of the family, and how she connects with them, even though they have grown up in really, really different worlds. It was also really fascinating to see and their relationship and friendship grow. And I really liked the friend, the one friend. Do I never remember her name? I thought I'd written it down, but I haven't. Ginika? I don't know how to say that, but she was very much like how imperialism and why people have affected the country and like mentioned it a lot. And they were just like, okay. <laughs> and it was just, it was just funny because it definitely has, of course, of course. Bevy just like got her like snarky comments about it and I was just like, <clears throat> lol. And definitely like a lot of other things coming into play, like how if you're lighter skin, you're seen upon as more beautiful, etc. And Sam, you know, the younger sister who experienced less abuse, had a lighter skin. So it seemed like their mother loved her more because she had to have much darker skin, stuff like that. Interesting to read about and definitely like things that are very prominent, you know, in our world. As well as class difference, like how Sam interacted with the people working in a mansion compared to how her cousin interacted with them and how that like affects 
stuff later in the book, stuff like that. It's just very interesting. Sam also struggles with anxiety, but she never knew it was anxiety. She has like literal panic attacks and she just thought that it was God punishing her because she grew up in a very religious household. She never knew it was like, you know, a anxiety disorder and she struggles with this. And it's very interesting to see her realize this and be like, oh, Oh my god and just seeing you know people from different worlds coming together sam definitely has a very interesting journey and she's you know in a way lucky that she gets this experience to live with her rich aunt and uncle and get like you know better opportunities for herself but then we have a sister who does not get this and it's very heartbreaking to read about i really really felt for her she's a very angry person i would say very like queen bee attitude and i loved her and i wanted her to have everything good but it was so difficult to read about her especially with her mother and how her mother just did not have, have I was gonna say any good things to say about her and it really broke my heart to see her struggle as much as she did and i was just like dang not that Sam didn't struggle, it was definitely like a different thing, but it's definitely just, you know, they had two, it felt like they were in two different worlds, which also the book reflects really well. So I feel like the book had like layers upon layers with different, you know, interactions and bonds between everything and yeah, like, like an onion. <laughs> but then something happens. I think, I don't remember exactly where, like mid in the book, that kind of turns the table a bit. It becomes very, very serious. Like we were already in a serious book, but we were like settling in. And then something very serious happens that I was just like, oh my God, I did not expect that to happen at all. And then there's like a plot twist, like kind of two. One, two, and I was like, <gasps> <laughs> so the book kind of turns into a bit of a different book but a very dramatic one but I still think it reflects so much about the characters and just the story and how I was gonna say dire things are in, for them and I don't want to spoil it but it was just such a ride after that I was just like oh my god and then other things came to light and I was like oh my god I did not see that coming at all and you really just have to read it to figure out what I'm talking about. But it was just, I I liked it. I liked it. Oh, like, there's nothing here I didn't like. It's a very interesting book. Now, of course, I can speak about the experience and how it's written as a person who's actually from Nigeria. Obviously, I'm not from Nigeria. So I would, like, encourage to actually look up what people have been saying about it. If people have read it that are actually from there, etc. Because... I can't speak about, you know, that experience, obviously. So I can't like stand here, obviously, and say, oh my God, this is accurate and that and that and that. I'm just saying, of course, it's fiction, but I don't know the accuracy of the story, obviously. But there's a thing to keep in mind. I would know, but I know the author is from Nigeria. So there's that. So um, I would say that she knows better than I. <laughs> oh, it says here in the bio from the author, she writes stories she wanted to read when she was younger. Stories about young Nigerian girls who are chaotic, fierce, and don't question what they are taught. Definitely what she managed to do here, I would say. And it's just like a really enjoyable book. If I read contemporary, I would want to read something like this that is a bit deeper, that has, you know, more layers. And it's like... A bit different, I would say, from other white contemporaries, like, I would say, like, a really popular, I guess. I can, like, think about the ones I like. They always have more for me. I don't know how to describe it. But yeah, it was just very enjoyable. My parents are walking a lot upstairs. I'm sorry if you can hear that. You know what? I tried to explain all this. It literally says... In the synopsis, the beauty of the Rima Onoseta definitely explores the classism, colorism, cycle of abuse. How loyalty doesn't always come attached to love and, and the message truths that sometimes family is not a source of comfort and that morality is all shades of grey. Literally, what the book felt. I feel like it did really, really well. Now, I don't think it's a five star book for me just because I need a certain five star feeling to give five stars, but I am giving it a really strong four star and I really did enjoy it. And I would encourage people to pick it up if you like this kind of story, obviously. If you like going contemporaries and want to read something a bit different, set somewhere different, it's also very important. And just read about these two girls that I really, really cared for and I really cared for the story. Now, I was a bit hesitant actually to pick it up just because I just saw it, you know, and I never heard about it. I haven't seen anyone talk about it, but I was very, very pleasantly surprised of how well it was. Because, not saying that just because something is not known, it's not good, but it just, 
you know, you're hesitant sometimes. But I really, really did enjoy it and I would definitely recommend it. And I'm happy I read it. I need to get myself a finished copy at some point. But you know, so many books in line to get. But yeah, I think that basically covers what I want to say. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you will pick up the book uh, if it sounds interesting to you. And you will see me soon in a new one. Leave the wings in the title. It's birds on the cover. Bird emoji, maybe? Something with wings. Or oh, it's just like a wing emoji, probably not. If you enjoyed this, and you will see me soon. Bye!